Hello everyone, I'm Arath Rukabhomek and I welcome you all to another episode of Quotes Today on Live Law where we update you about all the important legal developments that took place across the country today. We will begin with developments from the Supreme Court and then cover high courts and other lower courts. If you like our content, please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. In a significant development, the Supreme Court today passed a direction to terminate the mandate of the Committee of Administrators, which had been constituted by the court to manage the affairs of the All India Football Federation, that is the AIFF. The court passed this order in light of the decision taken by FIFA to suspend AIFF, which construed the functioning of the Committee of Administrators as a third party interference. A bench comprising Justices D.Y. Chandrachur and E.S. Bopana modified the earlier directions relating to the Committee of Administrators and the elections of the AIFF so as to facilitate the revocation of the AIFF suspension and to ensure that India can host the Under-17 Women's World Cup in October this year as scheduled. The centre made this request to the court after it held negotiations with the FIFA last week. A review petition has been filed before the Supreme Court against its July 27th judgment in Vijay Madanlal Chaudhary v. Union of India, which upheld the power of arrest, attachment and search and seizure conferred on the Enforcement Directorate by the Prevention of Money Laundering Act 2002. The plea was mentioned before CGI NV Ramana today and will be listed in due course. The Supreme Court today issued notice on a plea moved by social activist Tista Setalwad seeking bail in the case registered by the Gujarat Anti-Terrorism Squad alleging falsification of records to implicate high state functionaries in the Gujarat riots conspiracy case. A bench comprising Justice Uday Umesh Lalit, Justice S. Ravindra Bhatt and Justice Sudhash Dholia directed the petitioner to serve the standing counsel for the state and has kept the matter for further hearing on Thursday, that is August 25th. Tista has approached the Supreme Court against the Gujarat High Court's refusal to grant her interim bail. She was arrested on June 26th from Mumbai by the Gujarat Anti-Terrorism Squad a day after the Supreme Court dismissed the petition filed by Zakia Jafri, challenging the SIT's clean chit to high-ranking state functionaries and the then Gujarat Chief Minister Narendra Modi in the alleged larger conspiracy behind the 2002 riots. The Chief Justice of India, N.V. Ramana, today said that he has constituted a bench led by Justice D.Y. Chandrachur to decide upon the questions pertaining to the legal dispute between the Delhi government and the central government regarding the control over administrative services in the national capital. A three-judge bench of the Supreme Court had in May this year referred the matter to the Constitution bench. Now today, when an oral mention was made by advocate Shadan Farasat, the CGI said that he has already constituted the bench. So what is the issue in this case? The issue is that whether the government of NCT of Delhi has legislative and executive powers in relation to services under Schedule 7, List 2, Entry 41 of the Constitution of India and whether the officers of various services such as IAS, IPS, etc. who have been allocated Delhi by the Union of India come under the administrative control of the NCT of Delhi. The Supreme Court today stayed all proceedings against BJP leader Sai Shah Nawaz Hussain in connection with an alleged 2018 rape case. Hussain has approached the top court challenging an order of the Delhi High Court directing the registration of an FIR against him. A bench comprising Justice Uday Umesh Lalit, Justice S. Ravindar Bhatt and Justice Sudhash Dhulia issued notice in the plea and the matter will now be heard next month. The bench also granted liberty to the complainant who was allegedly threatened and assaulted at the behest of the accused to approach the police who shall be under an obligation to provide protection if required. The Supreme Court today adjourned the plea filed by Rajya Sabha MP Dr. Subramaniam Swami seeking directions to the centre for declaring Ram Setu as a national heritage monument. A bench comprising Justices D.Y. Chandrachur and E.S. Bapana noted 
that the decision regarding the grant of national heritage status is the prerogative of the executive. However, during the proceedings today, Dr. Swami apprised the bench that the central government has been dilly-dallying on the pretext that the apex court has to take cognizance of the matter. The bench stated that the matter had been assigned to it only a few days back and therefore it would need some time to go through the hefty documents. In the interim, Dr. Swami sought the court's indulgence to ask the central government to file its counter affidavit in the matter and take a stand on the issue. He added that if the centre is opposing his petition, then they should clearly indicate the same. The Supreme Court today directed status quo to be maintained in the matter pertaining to OBC reservations in the Maharashtra local elections. This means that the OBC quota cannot be implemented for the time being in the 367 local bodies where the election process has already been notified. A special bench of the Supreme Court comprising Chief Justice of India N. V. Ramana, Justice Abhay S. Oka and Justice J. B. Pardiwala was considering an application filed by the state of Maharashtra seeking recall of the July 20th and July 28th orders which restrained the State Election Commission from re-notifying the election process in 367 local bodies where election process has already been notified so as to implement the OBC quota. The Supreme Court today heard a plea by the Adani Port Trust and Special Economic Zone aggrieved by the Bombay High Court's order of dismissing its plea challenging the disqualification for upgradation of the container terminal in Navi, Mumbai by the Board of Trustees of Jawaharlal Nehru Port Authority. The matter was listed before a bench of Chief Justice of India, N.V. Ramana, Justices C.T. Ravi Kumar and Hima Kohli. At the outset of the proceedings, Senior Advocate A.M. Singhvi, appearing for the Adani Port Trust, submitted that Adani was being disqualified in other tenders as a result of a cascading effect. The bench will continue hearing the matter tomorrow. We will now begin with the developments from the high courts and other lower courts. Observing that Article 25 and 26 of the Constitution embodies the principle of religious tolerance, which is a characteristic of the Indian civilization, the Karnataka High Court disposed of a PIL alleging that the contents of Azan, that is the call for prayers in Islam, hurt the sentiments of believers of other faiths. Advocate Manjunath S. Halawar, appearing for the petitioner Chandrasekhar R., submitted that though Azan is an essential religious practice of Muslims, however, the words Allahu Akbar used in the Azan, which is translated to be Allah is the greatest, affect the religious beliefs of others. A division bench of acting Chief Justice Alok Aradhe and Justice Vishwajit Shetty refused to accept the condition that the contents of the Azan violate the fundamental rights guaranteed to the petitioner as well as persons of other faiths. A Delhi court has recently expressed its displeasure at the state of police investigation in a 2020 Northeast Delhi riots case where a man named Sajid, who was a complainant in the case, was surprisingly himself made an accused in an attempt to murder case that targeted him. Questioning the probe additional sessions judge Amitav Rawat in an order passed on August 18th observed and I quote here, Curiously, Sajid during investigation was made an accused. One of the primary reasons was that since he had suffered a gunshot injury during the riots, he can be held to be a part of the rioters mob. By this logic, every injured person in a riots case can be made an accused. You can refer to a detailed video on this order for more information. In an interesting development, the Karnataka High Court has observed that nowadays in government offices, corruption has become rampant and that no file is moved without a bribe. Justice K. Nataranjan made the observation while refusing bail to B.T. Raju working as the assistant engineer with the Bangalore Development Authority. The Anti-Corruption Bureau of the state had arrested him for demanding and accepting a bribe of Rs 5 lakhs. The court recorded in the order and I quote, Nowadays in the government office, the corruption has become rampant and no file will be moved without a bribe. 
Therefore, I am of the view that the petitioner is not entitled for the grant of bail at this stage. The Delhi High Court today sought the stand of the central government on a plea filed by a renowned UK anthropologist and social scientist Filippo Osella challenging his recent deportation from the Tiruvantaram airport in Kerala on 23rd March this year. Justice Yashwan Varma granted time to the council appearing on behalf of the centre for obtaining instructions in the matter while posting the matter for further hearing on October 12th. In his plea, Osala has challenged the authorities' action of deporting him as being unconstitutional and arbitrary, alleging that no reasons for the same have been given to him till date, despite various representations having been made. A public interest litigation petition has been moved before the Calcutta High Court seeking prohibition on the exhibition of the Amir Khan and Karina Kapoor Khan starer movie Lal Singh Chadha in the state, alleging that the same may cause a breach of peace in the state. BJP leader and lawyer Nazir Ilahi Khan has moved the High Court stating that the situation in the state is extremely volatile in relation to any religious issue. In this regard, and to substantiate her arguments further, the petitioner has also referred to some of the recent instances when the state has come under a critical situation. The Kerala High Court today has stayed the appointment of Priya Vargis, wife of K.K. Ragesh, private secretary to the Chief Minister Pinaray Vijayan, as an associate professor at the Department of Malayalam in the Kannur University till August 31st. Justice Devan Ramchandran has passed the interim order staying the appointment of Priya Vargis as an associate professor in a petition filed by the second rank holder in the list. The special court today rejected Mumbai police's plea to issue non-bailable warrants against MP Navneet Rana and MLA Ravi Rana in the Hanuman Chalisa case over alleged breach of bail conditions. Special Judge R.S. Rokhade passed the order after hearing Advocate Rizwan Merchant for the accused and Special Public Prosecutor Pradeep Ghattar for the state. The Ranas were booked on April 23rd for the offence of sedition over their demand to forcefully chant the Hanuman Chalisa outside the Chief Minister Udhav Thakre's personal residence. They were granted bail on May 4th. The Bombay High Court today clapped all 22 FIRs filed against Marathi actor Ketaki Chitale and the six FIRs against student Nikhil Bhamre imprisoned by the Maharashtra police for sharing posts at NCP Supremo Sharad Pawar. The FIRs against Chitale and Bhamre have been transferred to Kalwa and Navpada respectively. All additional FIRs barring the first will be treated as statements recorded under Section 164 of the CRPC in view of the judgment in Amish Devgan's case. A division bench of Justices Nitin Jamdar and Justice N.R. Borkar passed the order in their respective petitions seeking quashing of the FIR. The bench has adjourned the matter for further hearing on September 7th. Thank you. Keep watching Quotes today on Live Law for more such updates. See you tomorrow. In the meantime, please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel.